Have you ever wondered how we know so much about our past? How historians can tell us about events that happened hundreds, even thousands of years ago? History is not just a collection of dates, events, and names. It's a fascinating tapestry, woven with threads of human triumphs and tragedies, revolutions and revelations. It's the story of us, our journey as a species, and the world we've shaped along the way. But how do we piece together this intricate puzzle of the past? How do historians unravel the mysteries that took place before our time, before the age of cameras and the internet? The answer lies in the art of asking questions, the pursuit of curiosity, and the relentless quest for knowledge. This is where the concept of the historical method comes into play. Just like a detective solving a complex case, historians use this method to investigate the past. They gather evidence, cross-examine sources, scrutinize details, and piece together the story of what happened and why. The historical method is not just about finding facts, but understanding their context, their cause, and their consequences. It's about sifting through the sands of time, unearthing clues and reconstructing the story of our past. It's a process that requires a keen eye, a critical mind, and an insatiable curiosity. So why does it matter? Why should we care about the historical method or the past? Because history is not just about the past, it's about understanding ourselves, our society and our world. It's about learning from our mistakes, celebrating our achievements and preparing for our future. By studying history, we get a clearer picture of who we are, where we came from, and where we're going. We gain valuable insights into human nature, societal trends, and global patterns. We learn about the forces that shape our world, and the ideas that drive our actions. The key to unlocking these past mysteries lies in the historical method, a step-by-step -step process used by historians. So join us, as we delve deeper into this intriguing journey of discovery, exploring the art and science of piecing together our past. So, what is this historical method that historians use? Well, imagine you're a detective, but instead of solving a crime, you're trying to solve the mysteries of the past. The historical method is like a detective's toolkit, but for historians. It's a systematic process of inquiry that allows historians to investigate the past, just like detectives investigate a crime scene. Let's break it down into its basic steps. The first step is posing a question. This question might be about an event, a person, or a trend. For instance, why did the Roman Empire fall, or what led to the American Revolution? The question sets the direction for the research. Next comes the research phase. This is where historians become detectives, digging deep into primary and secondary sources. These sources can be anything from letters, diaries, and official documents, to scholarly books and articles. The objective is to collect as much evidence as possible related to the question at hand. Then we move on to analyzing sources. This is where historians evaluate the evidence they've collected. They scrutinize each source, considering its origin, purpose, value, and limitation. They also cross-reference sources to corroborate the information. This step is crucial as it helps historians separate fact from fiction. Finally, we arrive at forming a conclusion. This is where historians piece together the evidence to answer the original question. They use their analysis of the sources to build an argument that explains the past. However, this conclusion isn't set in stone. As new information comes to light, historians may revisit their conclusions, adjusting and refining their understanding of the past. So, you see, the historical method isn't a straight line from question to answer. It's an iterative process that often involves revisiting steps as new information comes to light. It's a cyclical journey of inquiry, research analysis, and conclusion. The historical method, in essence, is a historian's toolbox for unearthing the truths of our past. It's how we make sense of the world that was, to understand the world that is. Let's apply the historical method to a real-world example, the fall of the Roman Empire. When historians delve into the past, they start by posing a question. In the case of the Roman Empire, the question is straightforward yet complex. Why did the Roman Empire fall? This question has been the subject of countless debates and discussions sparking the curiosity of historians and scholars alike. The next step in the historical method is research, which involves reading primary and secondary sources. Primary sources are first-hand accounts of the era, think letters, documents, and artifacts from the time of the Roman Empire. Secondary sources, on the other hand, are interpretations or analyses of these primary sources. Historians might pore over ancient Roman texts, study archaeological evidence, or read books written by other historians on the subject. Once the research phase is complete, historians move on to analysis. 
This is where they evaluate the validity and reliability of their sources. They ask themselves questions like, is this source authentic? Is it biased? What was the context in which it was created? In the case of the Roman Empire, historians might scrutinize the writings of ancient Roman scholars, questioning their motives or the accuracy of their accounts. They might also consider the cultural, political, and economic context in which these sources were created. The final step in the historical method is the conclusion, where historians form a theory based on their analysis. For the fall of the Roman Empire, theories abound. Some historians argue that the empire fell due to internal decay, pointing to political corruption, economic instability, and social decline. Others suggest external pressure, such as invasions by barbarian tribes as the primary cause. Still, others propose a combination of these factors. By following the historical method, historians have provided us with theories about why the Roman Empire fell, shedding light on a significant event in our past. Through this process, we gain a deeper understanding of history, not just as a series of events, but as a complex interplay of factors and influences. The fall of the Roman Empire is just one example of how the historical method can be used to unravel the mysteries of the past. Another intriguing example of the historical method at work is the American Revolution. Now let's dive into this pivotal chapter of history. What led to the American Revolution? This question is our starting point, and from here, we set off on our historical investigation. To answer this question we turn to a variety of sources. Letters exchanged between the colonists, diaries of key figures, and official documents from the period. These primary sources offer us raw, unfiltered insights into the events leading up to the revolution. But the historical method is not just about gathering data, it's about scrutinizing it. We must critically evaluate the credibility of these sources. Who wrote the document? What was their perspective or bias? What was the context in which it was written? Take for example the famous Common Sense pamphlet by Thomas Paine. This piece played a significant role in rallying the colonists against the British rule. But to understand its impact, we must consider Paine's motivations and the political climate of the time. Or let's look at the Stamp Act of 1765, an official document that imposed taxes on the colonies. This law was a catalyst for the revolution, but to fully grasp its significance we must delve into the economic and social conditions of the colonies at the time. So we've posed a question, done our research and analyzed our sources. What's left? Drawing a conclusion. Based on our analysis we form a theory. The American Revolution was not a spontaneous uprising, it was the result of a complex interplay of economic, political and social factors. The colonists' growing sense of identity, coupled with their resentment towards British taxes and regulations, sparked a revolution that would reshape the world. And just like that, by applying the historical method, we've pieced together a narrative from a mosaic of sources. We've gone beyond the surface and explored the deeper currents that propelled the American Revolution. Through the historical method, we gain insights into the causes and consequences of the American Revolution. The historical method is more than a step-by-step -step process. It's a key to unlock the mysteries of our past, to understand our present, and to speculate intelligently about our future. In our journey so far, we've seen how the historical method has shed light on the fall of the Roman Empire and the American Revolution. But these are just two examples among countless others. When we delve into history, whether it's ancient civilizations, world wars, or societal changes, the historical method is our guiding principle. At its core, the historical method is a way of thinking critically. It encourages us to question, analyze, and interpret historical events rather than merely accepting them as facts. This process of inquiry is what separates history from mere storytelling. It's what gives us a deeper understanding of the complexities and nuances of our past. The historical method also demands a rigorous evaluation of sources. It asks us to consider who wrote a document, why they wrote it, and what perspective they might have had. This scrutiny allows us to assess the reliability and relevance of historical evidence, and to piece together a more accurate and comprehensive picture of the past. But perhaps the most powerful aspect of the historical method is its ability to connect the dots. It helps us see patterns and relationships between events, people, and ideas. It shows us that history is not a series of isolated incidents, but a complex web of interconnected happenings. History in essence is a conversation with the past, 
The historical method equips us with the tools to engage in this conversation, to ask the right questions, and to listen to the answers with an open and critical mind. This method is not just for historians or scholars, it's for anyone who wants to understand the world around them. It's for those who wish to see beyond the surface, to uncover the hidden layers of our collective story. With the historical method, we can take a journey back in time exploring the events that have shaped our world today. It's a journey of discovery, of understanding, and of enlightenment. And it's a journey that each one of us can embark upon. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.